we're going to continue past the top of the hour uh, nearly every night. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell everybody. Uh, I've got to ask you this. I, I haven't been on television since January of this year, but you haven't been on cable television since May 12, 2010. Why for? <laughs> well, it seems that your old boss had a little problem with me. I was under the impression that you were in charge of your own guests, that you can decide who could speak on your show, and, and those of uh, Ed Schultz and Rachel Maddow and the rest of the lineup on MSNBC. Turns out that Joe Scarborough has veto power over who can speak in everybody else's shows. I got in a little Twitter war with him. I mean, this is a Twitter war mm -hmm. uh, with Joe Scarborough. Apparently, I made him cry. He went crying to Phil Griffin, your old boss, and he decided that I would not be allowed back on MSNBC. NBC until I apologized to Joe Scarborough. I offered to buy him a fainting couch for Christmas, uh, some hankies to wipe away the tears, but apparently none of those were good enough. They needed an apology. So I found it very kind of bizarre that the lowest rated morning show host in all of cable news was dictating the guest list at the only show on cable news that cracked Fox News stranglehold on the top 10. I mean, yours was the most successful show, not just on MSNBC, but one of the most successful shows on cable, yet Joe Scarborough, a, a essentially a loser host, was dictating who you could talk to. Well, um, regardless of what all that might have been or not been, did, did you try to do anything to mend those bridges? Uh, you know, we, we, we tried to, to uh, and I, I mean, I tried to talk to, Joe, uh, to uh, uh, Phil Griffin, and uh, the fact is he wanted this apology, and, and that was what, what it was going to take. And I, I just didn't think that uh, uh, an apology, first of all, was warranted. And second of all, I, I would think that somebody who is a political host would have a bit of a thick skin. You know, God knows I get assaulted every day by the, my, my uh, colleagues on the right. Uh, I don't sit there and demand apologies. I get attacked from my friends on the left. I don't demand an apology. It comes with the territory. You're going to get uh, arrows slung at you, and you just sort of shrug them off, and you carry forth because you believe in what you believe in. Joe Scarborough apparently couldn't hack it, and so went crying to his, uh, to his superiors to try to do something about it. You print your, your best or worst hate mail, don't you? I mean, you publish it on, on, the, on the website. I do. I mean, this is, it comes with the territory. I mean, people all the time, you know, they, my readers say, I can't believe you read through this stuff. Uh, I, I read through this stuff. I mean, it happens. It comes with the territory. So I'm not afraid of it. I have a thick skin, though. I understand that I'm going to be accused of all horrible things, 99.9% uh, .9 of them being wrong, scandalous, potentially libelous. It comes with the territory. I slog it off, I shrug it off, and I move forward. Well, that's, all, that's kind of a sad story you told us just there, Marcos. <laughs> it's not a, well, it might have been a sad story. I think this is a thrilling story. I, I'm happy that now you're here. You've got a new show. You're on a network where you get to call the shots, as far as I can tell. I'm not exactly behind the scenes, but it looks like you're on a good situation. I like your <laughs> boss quite a bit. And, and uh, I think we're, we're, I'm going to do everything I can to help you build something incredible because we they have very few voices on, on television of any sort, good, strong, populist, progressive voices. And, uh, you know, you're, I, I believe you're a national treasure, and I can't wait to do everything I can to make your show a success. Thank you, sir. Marcos Melitzis of Daily Coast, and now Countdown contributor. Great, thanks. All right. That's Countdown. Up next on Vanguard, the newest nightmare of OxyContin, gateway to heroin, including pharmacy jacking, which may have been the intent of a murderous attack yesterday at a suburban New York City drugstore. I'm Keith Olbermann. Thank you for helping us preserve freedom of news. Good night and good luck.